I'd like to welcome you to this second chapter of the book of Malachi. We're going to continue in verse 1. Kenin e entoli afti prosimas o iaris. And now this commandment is to you, O priests. The entoli, a commandment. Uh, we'll be going through a lot of these when we get into the uh, first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses, the difference between commandments and ordinances and so forth. But this is a commandment. Uh, pros, we have prosthetic, proscribe. Uh, it's a prefix for something uh, for nearer to words. And O priests, the priests of the hierarchy, whenever you see the uh, iota, a vowel starting a word, and a lot of times in English the H sound is added. Ha. So, uh, hieris, uh, iris, and it's hier hierarchy or hieroglyphic. That's a, a Egyptian sacred priestly writing. In verse 2, Aon me, akusite, ke aon me, thistai, is tin kardian imon, tu dune, doxen to onomati mu, legi. Kyrios Pantocrator K ex apostolo F imas tin kataran K epikatarasome tin evlogian imon K katarasome of tin K uk este en imin oti imis u tithiste is tin Carthian. I'll move that down a little bit so you can see the Carthian there. There we are. And verse 2. If you should not hearken, acousite, the here, we have acoustics, this derivative, and if you should not put it into your Carthian, the cardiac arrest, into your heart, to give glory, dokes and the doxology, to my name. Uh, we have a nomenclature, the onoma, uh, or noma, uh, synonym, anonymous. All these words come from uh, this word ono, onoma. Uh, if you do not give glory to my uh, name and put it into your heart, legi says, we have the leg, as we mentioned uh, many times before, uh, and it has to do with the log, uh, the log, leg, dialogue, prologue, legos, and logos are very similar. One's a word and the other's speech or saying. Uh, says Kyrios Pantocrator, then I will send upon you ex apostolo. We have a uh, compound word, ek, ex, ek, as from 1537 is the uh, preposition, and September 649. Apostolo, it's apostle, is a derivative, sending out. I will send you out. If it was send, it would just, wouldn't have the X. It would just be apostolo. I will send you out, or I will send out upon you the curse. And I will accurse uh, your evlogion, your blessing. We have a eulogy, a composition commending something or someone. And I will curse it, and it will not be among you. The blessing will not be among them uh, if uh, they do not give glory to his name. So uh, it's a lesson for us. If we don't give glory to him, if we take the glory in to him ourselves for the things that God has done for us, and if we don't even put it into our heart, then uh, he will... Uh, curse, our blessing will become a curse. It says, uh, "For you to, for you put it not to your heart." Carthian again. Verse three. It continues. Do ego aphorizo imin ton omon ke scorpio enistron epi ta prosopa imon enistron your tone imon, ke lipsome imas is to afto. God says, Behold, 
ego, I, the ego, personal pronoun, I separate to you the shoulder. Uh, it has in the Hebrew, behold, I am rebuking your seed. And I looked in the Hebrew and I, uh, I don't, there's a difference there between the two. Uh, but then it continues, and I will disperse dung of the large intestines upon epi, uh, your prosopa, your face. And uh, the, I don't believe he's talking about the sacrifices of separating the shoulder, uh, the meat, uh, in the sacrifice here. I think, uh, to me, it's uh, he's turning his back towards him is what, it, what it's saying, but it's a little on the confusing side. And... Uh, but anyway, it's uh, definitely, I will disperse the dung of the large intestines upon your faces. Dung of the large intestines of your holiday feasts. All these uh, cattle that are being slaughtered and lambs, and the, the dung that comes out of them, it's going to put it into their faces. And I will take you away uh, at the same time. Time is not there, but the avto uh, generally it means... Uh, the same time or the same place, something that you have to kind of fill in the blank of what it's talking about from the context. And then verse 5, it continues, K epigenosis the theoti ego exapestoka prosimas teen entolin taftin to ine teen the athikin mu pros tus levitas legi kyrios Pantocrator. And you shall realize that I, ego, the ego, the pronoun again, I sent out pros to, the pros that we mentioned before, that's the uh, uh, preposition, I sent out to you this commandment. Now the purple or the blue are all the articles, uh, direct articles uh, that uh, are the accusative, that means they're the object. And right up here, behold, I separate, I separate to you the shoulder. So tone, whenever you see the tone or the teen down here in 2-4, and the tus and the tas in the plural, then you know it's the object and it's not the subject. So it helps in the Greek by knowing these articles and looking for them. And whenever you see them in the verse, first thing you can do is find the article and then you know for sure uh, what it is and then you can uh, pretty well figure out the sentence. From there, uh, so tone, uh, I will separate to you the shoulder, and I will disperse the dung, and it goes on in verse 4, uh, and you will realize that I sent out to you this commandment, teen and tolene, I sent out to you this commandment, to be uh, my commandment with the Levites, says the Lord Almighty, uh, the commandment with the uh, Levites. Legi, we mentioned before, and Kyrios Pantocrator has been throughout this uh, book. And we will go now to, uh, what is he talking about, this commandment with the Levites? And um, in the Numbers 25, if you want to open your Bibles to Numbers 25th chapter, it goes and uh, says, And Israel rested up in Shittim, and the people profaned to fornicate with the daughters of Moab. And they called them unto the sacrifices of their idols, that is, the daughters, and the people ate of their sacrifices. They, they did obeisance to their idols, that is, the children of Israel with the Moabites. And Israel was initiated to Baal Peor. And the Lord was provoked to anger and rage with Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the heads of the people and make an example of them for the Lord uh, over against the sun. And the anger of the rage of the Lord shall turn away from Israel. And Moses said to the tribes of Israel, Let each kill the one of his family being initiated to Baal Peor. And behold, a man of the sons of Israel coming led forward his brother to the Midianitish woman before Moses and before all the congregation of the sons of Israel. And they were weeping by the door of the tent of the testimony. And seeing... Phineas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, rose up from the midst of the congregation, and taking a spear in his hand, he entered after the Israelitish man into the furnace, and he pierced both the Israelitish man and the woman through her womb, and the calamity ceased from the sons of Israel. 
And the ones having died by the calamity were four and twenty thousand. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, caused my rage rest from the sons of Israel, in my being jealous in the zeal for them, and I did not completely consume the sons of Israel in my zeal. Thus say, Behold, I make with him my covenant of peace, and it will be to him and to his seed after him a covenant of an eternal priesthood, because he was jealous for his God, and he atoned for the sons of Israel." So uh, we see here the uh, sons of Aaron, this eternal covenant, and God made this covenant, but the priests are no longer as uh, Phineas. They're changing and they're doing uh, evil things as we've seen, and we'll continue to find out. And verse 5, it continues... I the athiki mu in met af tu ti zois ke tis irinis ke edoka af to fovo fovis the me ke apo prosupu onomatos mu stellas the af tone. My covenant was with him the one of life and peace. Uh, that was what he was saying. That. Uh, and right here it says in verse 12, Thus say, Behold, I make with him my covenant of peace, Irenes. There it is again, Irenes in both places. And I gave to him fovo, fear, uh, to fear me, fovo, f uh, phobia. Irene, we have the uh, name Irene, which means peace. And zoes, it has a zoo, it has to do with life and animals. I uh, gave him uh, this covenant and from the presence of my name, to put him in readiness. So this is what he had, uh, this covenant for these men, these priesthood to be special to him, to be ready at all times, to do the sacrifices and uh, warn people and uh, prepare them for the uh, right actions that needed to be taken place to be in front of God. In verse 6, Nomos alitheas in en tostomati of two. Ke adikia uk evrethi in heli sinav tu, in irini katevthinon eporevthi medemu, ke polus apestripsen apo adikias. The nomos, the law, we have astronomy, the suffix for uh, laws, nomi. The law of truth was in his stomati, the stomatic has to do with the mouth, and Injustice was not found in his lips. In Irene, in peace, he straightened out to go with me, and many he turned from iniquity. It almost goes right back to that place we were reading in the Old Testament. And then verse 7, O tihili iareos philoxus te gnosin, ke nomon Exitisusin ek stomatos of tu, theoti angelos kiriu pantocratoros esti. For lips of priests shall guard knowledge. The heli of the priest, the hier hierarchy, uh, uh, hieroglyphics, the priest shall guard, philox, a prophylactic, something that guards in front, shall guard knowledge, gnosin, gnosis, knowledge, or the gnostics, the knower. Knowers. For the lips of the priests shall guard the knowledge. If the priests aren't doing this, then how can the people ever know? And they shall seek the law, nomon, again the uh, astronomy, nomi, from his mouth. They uh, shall seek the, uh, the law of the Lord. For he is a messenger of the Lord Almighty. Uh, they shall seek from his mouth. The people shall seek the law from the mouth of the priest. If the priest is giving incorrect laws or knowledge, then how can the people uh, know what is, what is the truth? It says, for he is, a priest is a messenger, angelos, it's not an angel. Uh, here it's uh, a messenger of the Lord, but the, if it was a heavenly being, then it would be an angel. He is of uh, the Lord Pantocratoros. 2.8. Emis they exaclinate actis odu ke 
estenisate polus in nomo, the athirate tin, the athikin to levi. Um, in verse 8, but you turned aside ek from, uh, this is preposition ek from eccentric, from the center, from the odu, uh, cathode, uh, current, way of a current. You turned aside from the way. And you weakened many uh, in f following uh, the law, polus, poly, we have uh, polygamy, many, uh, in the nomo. And they weakened many from following the law. The priesthood uh, can do this, or the ministers and preachers can give people the wrong idea, saying that something uh, bad is actually good or vice versa. And... Uh, the people will have the wrong information if they don't read the, the law themselves. So uh, a person needs to know the law and be a priest to themselves. And uh, we are priests, as talks of, uh, Jesus tells us, and we'll be kings. And uh, we need to know the law, what is right and what is wrong, and to follow it. For you corrupted the covenant of Levi. So these priests here and I still <clears throat> to me it seems like this is the condition before they were taken to Babylon. Legi Kyrios Pantocrator says the Lord Almighty in verse 9 uh, and I ego and uh, ke ego dedoka imas exudenomenus ke parimenus is pantata ethni Anth on imis uk ephilaxas the tas odus mu. Allah elam vanate prosopa en nomo. And I, ego, have given over, uh, have given you over as one's being treated with contempt and one's being disregarded among all panta, pan, panoply, and all the ethni the nations, ethnic, because you guarded not. A phylox, saste, there's the phylox. Whenever you see this phylox, it has something to do with guarding, a prophylactic, a, pro, a guard in front. You guarded not, uh, what? Uh, tas, there's the uh, the object, my ways, the ways. Odus, a cathode again, uh, for the way of a current. But, but you took persons in uh, the law, that means that uh, they took sides. Maybe there was a friend. And so uh, this somebody in the family was charged with doing something that was wrong. And they would overlook it and say that this was all right because uh, that person was a relative. Or it could have been a rich person that was giving a lot of money uh, to that uh, to the temple. And same thing today uh, we see with the, in churches a lot of times uh, ministers will overlook things that uh, are going on with people in the uh, congregation that want something done that's wrong when they've been giving a lot of money to the congregation and so uh, the pastor overlooks it because of uh, this money that's being given or it could be an old friend who doesn't want to uh, hurt his feelings and so he doesn't tell him what he needs to be doing. Uh, being put in this position is uh, uh, serious because of what uh, the uh, disregarding it is terrible in God's eyes. So being put in this position, somebody shouldn't be taken it lightly. Uh, it should be. It's a. It's an important uh, responsibility. In verse ten, it continues: Uki patir is panton imon, uki theos is. Ectisen imas, ti oti, eg katalipate, ekastos, ton adolfonav tu, tu vevilose, tin viathikin, ton pateron imon. Is there not one father? Again, we mentioned before about the father and the trinity, the father, son, 
the Holy Spirit being in the Old Testament. Here it is again. Is there not one Father? Is. Uh, we have 1520. It's not the same as the EIS in 2, 1519. They are spelled the same, but they have a different meaning. And you kind of almost have to see it by the context in this form of uh, Is. And uh, we have the English derivative of Ace. Uh, is one. That's where it comes from. Is there not one pater, the paternal one uh, is a derivative? Is there not one father of all of you? Did not one theos, is theos, theology, one God create you? For what reason did you abandon each his brother to profane the covenant of your fathers? And he's questioning these men. Why, why did they leave? For what reason did you abandon uh, his, your brother, the Adelphone? Uh, we have the uh, Philadelphia, Adelphone is the city, uh, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. The Adelphone is the, uh, the brother part of that name. Uh, to profane the covenant of your pateron, uh, it's, uh, uh, of your fathers. So God is uh, asking them, what's making you uh, leave? and uh, abandoning this important station that he has given. And uh, if a person has somewhat abandoned him, I don't think it's ever too late to, to go back and to start getting serious with God and uh, looking at uh, yourself and the things that you're teaching and how much you know of the Word. You really need to know uh, the Word. A person that's in leadership really needs to know the Word to teach them the truth, not just from reading other books on uh, what the truth is, but the uh, law itself, the Word of God. 2.11, Ekatalithi Iudas, Ke Vedaligma, Egenato, and To Israel, Ke in Jerusalem, the Oti of Ivilosen Iudas Ta Agia A Kiriu and Is Igapise Ke Epatidavsen Is Theus Alotrius. And then he continues A Judah abandoned, and an abomination took place in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah profaned the Agia, the holy things. We have a, well, again, there's a H sound on the front of this one in English, Hagia, Hagia uh, Hagiarchy, a government by saints or priests, uh, Hagiographa is the last of the three Jewish divisions of the Old Testament, uh, Hagiography, a biography of the saints, and Hagia is holy, holy things of Kiriu, in which he loved and applied unto Theus, uh, theology, alien gods. So they went after uh, these alien gods. The stars were told, uh, the military of the heavens, uh, on the rooftops right before Jerusalem was destroyed. That's where the Jews were uh, doing obeisance and bowing down. Exolo threvsi kyrios ton anthropon ton piunta tavta eos an tapino thi ek skinimaton iakov. K ek prosagonton thesianto kirio pantokratori. The Lord, the Kyrios, uh, will utterly destroy the man, anthropon, anthropology, doing the P uh, 4160. Remember, that's the, one of the most used verbs in the Bible to learn that. 4160 has to do with doing, making, observing, something to do with the action of doing. Uh, doing these things. The Lord will utterly destroy the man doing these things until whenever he should be humbled from out of the tents of Jacob and from out of the ones bringing a sacrifice to the Lord Almighty. Kyrio Pantocratori. And the priesthood was uh, taken away later and it was given to the Zadokian priesthood. The priests had left uh, with uh, David when he went across the uh, I think it was a kid drone, and they followed with David rather than the priest that uh, stayed and didn't follow God. In verse 13, Ke ta epite ekaliptete vakrisi to thesiasterion kiriu in klavthmo ke stenagmo ek kopon 
eti oxion epivlepin e stesion e lavin dekton ek ton hieronimon. And he continues, and these things which I detested, you did. Apiate, uh, they did, these things that he detested. Um, you covered uh, ekaliptate, uh, apocalypse is the uh, revelation and uncovering, but here it's the kalipt, uh, depends on the uh, prefix before it, what it can mean, covering or covering, and here it's a regular cover, you covered, past tense. Uh, you covered what? To the altar of the Lord in tears, in weeping, uh, and moaning because of the copone, because of the troubles, yet thinking it worthy to look upon your sacrifice or to take as acceptable from out of your hands. Uh, they were giving these sacrifices that weren't acceptable and uh, thinking that they were acceptable from out of their hands. And they covered uh, this uh, things that they did and uh, they covered him in tears and weeping and moanings because of what happened after they were uh, found out. Basically, I think it's what it's saying right here. Uh, when they were doing these, uh, these sacrifices were unacceptable. And it continues in verse 14. Ke ipate enikantinos otikirios via martirato anameson su ke anameson ginekos Neotito su in ekatalipas ke afti kino no su ke gini the athiki su. And you said, for what reason? In, in God says, in that the Lord testified between you and between the wife of your youth, whom you abandoned. Uh, they're abandoning the precepts of God. And he uses the uh, covenant of the marriage as an example. And she is your partner and the wife of your covenant. In verse 15, K U Kalon Epi say, K Ipo Lima Penevmatos of two. K Ipate T Alo E Sperma Z T O Theos. K Philoxus the into Penevmati Imon. K Gineka Neotito Su Mi Ekatalipis. But did he not uh, do good, a Pearson, do good, even a vestige of his uh, pnevmatos? Uh, this pnevmatos is a spirit. It uh, could be a wind. Uh, it's not here. I don't see this as the Holy Spirit, although the uh, uh, pnevma uh, can be a Holy Spirit if it has agios in front of it and sometimes even the uh, article. And you said... What other than a seed does God seek? Uh, what a, does God just, uh, the, I don't know, they make sort of, to me it's their uh, sperma, is, we have sperm and theos, are the, uh, the derivatives here. Uh, what other the, than a seed does God seek? Uh, they were telling Jesus uh, when he was there about being a seed of Abraham, and, and Jesus more or less said uh, that uh, God could make, you know, uh, the seeds of Abraham from out of the rocks. Uh, there, uh, what else does God want from us, more or less? Uh, but philox us they guard the philox in your spirit penevmati, and the wife of your youth do not abandon. God saying uh, so. Uh, there is this warning to the priesthood and to the ministry of guarding the spirit from letting it go and uh, make it as the wife of your youth and do not abandon them. Uh, have a love towards God as you did when you were young and uh, like you loved your wife when you first married instead of 20 years, 30 years later and you're kind of out uh, carousing around and the wife is doing her thing and you're doing your thing and the fire has uh, dwindled down to embers and, uh, and you're... Uh, in old and you don't have this uh, zest 
that you had when you were in your 20s when all the hormones were working. Well, sort of what God is saying here is uh, guard your spirit and do not abandon the wife of your youth. Do not abandon God. Actually, I think he wants us to uh, have this spark all the time, never to lose this spark, but to keep it constantly and have that relationship with him. And uh, do not abandon the wife of your, of your youth. And then verse 16, Allah Aeon, but if, if misinsas ex apostilis legi kirioso theos to Israel, ke calipsi asavia epita en thimima tam su legi kirioso theos pantocrator, ke philaxis the into penevmati imon, ke umi e catalipite. And if by detesting you should send her forth, says the Lord, ex apostilis, we had that before for the ex from an uh, apostle is being sent forth, legi curioso theos, Israel, then impiety uh, shall cover over, calypsi, again we had that earlier with apocalypse, shall cover over uh, your thoughts. Uh, if you do send her forth, uh, the wife of your youth, if you do... Uh, Send for get away go away from God, then impiety will be the result. The impiety over your thoughts, uh, says the Lord Almighty. And keep guard in your spirit, penevmati again, the penevma, pneumatics, the derivative, and in no way should you abandon them. So keep guard, uh, keep a watch out in your spirit, and in no way should you abandon them. If you're watching and you're reading the word of God, the law, uh, every day and keeping it in, then you won't abandon uh, these things. But if you get sidetracked away from the law of God, if you get sidetracked in uh, politics of a church, politics of the denominations, or uh, going out and uh, doing other things that can pull you away, then... Uh, then by abandoning the word is a dangerous place. It continues uh, in verse 17, E paroxinantes tonkirion intis logis imon, ke ipate intini paroxina men afton, into legin, uh, then uh, there was a question, into legin imas, pas pion poniron kalon, enopion kiriu, ke en aftis aftos evdokis se, Ke pu esten o theos tis de kiasinis. Uh, and then continues, uh, the ones, o oh, ones provoking the Lord. Uh, the ones is in the nominative, the subject, and the object is the Lord. The ones provoking the Lord. Uh, with your logis, with your word, the logos, again, as we mentioned, was the, uh, has to do with uh, uh, the word. And you said, and, uh, and, and you said, one, we provoked him in what? And God says, in your saying, in legging, in your saying, the speech, the legging, uh, pas, peon, everyone doing wicked is good before the Lord. And in them he thinks well of. Well, to me this is the... Uh, almost the sin against the Holy Spirit. And they came in front of Jesus, the Pharisees, and said that he was of Beelzebub. And basically they were saying that everything that is good is wicked or all the wicked is good. And here, if every, everyone doing wicked is good before the Lord, if this priesthood is saying, they see these people that are uh, doing these evil things, and it's obvious it's against uh, the uh, laws uh, in the Bible, adultery, stealing, pornography, um, homosexuality, murder, killing, uh, hatred, envy, all these different wicked things. Uh, and uh, it's one thing to do these things and uh, be doing wicked. Uh, and another is to say that these wicked things are good. There's a big difference there. If someone is doing wicked, there is the forgiveness uh, is there. But if someone is out there 
completely gone. Their brain is to the point or their spiritual life is to the point of uh, saying what is wicked is good. That's way more than doing it. That's actually teaching that this is good. And that's really I see as the sin of the Holy Spirit and against the Holy Spirit. And if a person is in that stage, they're in a, in a bad shape because uh, basically there's no uh, forgiveness because they're in a place of denial of saying this is uh, uh, wicked. Now, pony roan, is an, it's an interesting word. We also have caca, but it says pony roan here. Uh, the difference between the two, from what I see, is uh, caca is always something bad, uh, evil, uh, but uh, pony roan can be, uh, it can be bad or it can be not necessarily uh, evil. Uh, like it, you, can, you have bad weather. Well, it's not evil weather. It's bad weather. And uh, this is what this pony roan is, that type of a bad. Uh, the one doing bad is good before the Lord. And in them, he thinks well of. And, and where, and then the second thing is they say, and where is the God of righteousness? Uh, and then, well, where is God? God's nowhere to be found. He's not even important anymore. And they start uh, teaching things of, uh, have nothing to do with uh, God's word in the Bible. Anyway, this is uh, the situation that we see these people, uh, the priesthood and uh We'll go in, uh, further into the third chapter when it goes into uh, some important prophecies, if not some, one of the most important prophecies of the Bible. So we'll see you in chapter 3, and God bless.